So the ventilator has been progressing over the last couple of weekends. So where we are now is we have to have a source of compressed air at 4 bar to simulate hospital air, air, air supply. So here we have a diving cylinder and that's sitting at 100 bar which is obviously way too, too high. So this regulator drops it down to 10 bar and then we've got a compressed air regulator here and as you and that's dropped the pressure down to uh, it's regulating to 4 bar. So let me open the air now and you can see the pressure is sitting on 4 bar. So at, it's at this point that the hospital air supply would kick in in reality and what we have here is I've split the air three ways. This, this range over here is simulating an oxygen supply. This range over here is simulating um, air supply and to adjust those two flow rates you adjust to set your oxygen air mixture and this here is there just to help maintain steady back pressure. So only the, these first two air flows go through humidification. So let me open up the first valve and, and you'll, see, uh, you'll see the air flowing through the humidifier. Um, now you might be saying, well, how am I controlling the airflow? And if you have a look in my hand over here, you'll see a little plastic disc with a small hole. Now this hole is, is laser cut uh, to a specific size and that sets the flow rate. So within each of these pipes, uh, one of these orifice place, plates have been glued. Uh, and, and so that's why to set to open the air, you just open it full. So this orif the orifice plate in this line is, is uh, measured at 12 uh, liters uh, per minute of air and so that's what we're currently putting through that uh, humidifier. I'm going to open the next one which is 25 liters per minute and so we're going to have a much higher flow through this now. Okay so that's, 20, that's now a total of 35 liters per minute. And so now we're going to look at the next part of the apparatus and this is the, the, the patient circuit. So we, we have our patient. Patient, can you plug yourself into the breathing aid? Okay, you, you're struggling to plug yourself in there. Okay, okay. The patient is now plugged in. And as you can see, we have a, a back pressure that's been generated. Stabilize that back pressure, so we're running at about eight centimeters of, of back pressure, and as you can see, it's a pretty stable, and the patient looks quite comfortable. Is the patient breathing okay? Thumbs up. Is he breathing okay? Is it comfortable, patient? Okay. And is the air a bit more humid now than it used to be? Okay. So now we have our patient, but but uh, it's also important to protect the healthcare worker. And so you, this is, we have, if you can step back a bit, um, this is the aerosol box that is over the patient's head. Um, now our manometer is connected to the aerosol box, so it's, uh, it's easy to see what pressure is currently being applied. And the patient can also have a look at the pressure. Can the patient see the pressure? Okay, so the patient is also able just to see what the pressure is. But what we also have, we got rigged up here it is an extractor fan. So the whole idea is these masks are, are not 100% seal around the face. And if the patient moves or if there are any procedures that need to happen with the patient, then there could be some air leakage. And so uh, we rigged up an extractor fan. Now this is just demo for demonstration. Actually, it would be far better to have an extractor fan somewhere else than just the ducting. But, but here there's a connection to the aerosol box and then we would also recommend hanging a curtain down the front over here so there's just a natural airflow. So any leakage of aerosols from the actual mask will then get carried away and will, will get scrubbed separately. So, yeah, so here's the aerosol box, it weighs about 4 kgs, it's got access holes for 
and healthcare workers to to work on the work with the patient. Um, and so yeah, this is mark uh, mark three probably of the lockdown ventilator. Thank you. I'm going to look at some more of the finer details of of the incubator. So let's firstly look at the humidifier. So if you can come close and have a look, as you can see. There's, there's quite vigorous bubbling that's happening here, and this is um, and more than 30 litres per minute of, of air going through. And, and you, if you look over here, what, what, is, what you can't see inside here is a demister screen, a little uh, plastic gauze that's, that's breaking up the bubbles. And as you can see here, virtually no bubbles are getting into the line. Uh, if any bubbles do get into the line, you, you see here, is a, is a water trap, that, and you can see there has been a little bit of carryover over time of liquid. Uh, it, to get rid of that, you just open this, pour out the liquid, and attach back on, and that all happens while the patient is still breathing. So the patient is breathing, nice steady back pressure, uh, I think the patient's fallen asleep. Uh, but now we want to test, so what we have here is, is, the, is the bubbling tube, a back pressure control, and we also have a scrubber uh, with a demister in, in, in this chimney here. So the alternative treatment is, is a viral filter with a back pressure valve. So this back pressure valve, you can, you can adjust the pressure like that. So we'll start with the, the lowest pressure, and so we can unplug our bucket, you can hear the air. The patient's lost pressure um, and struggling to breathe now, so let's give, give the patient some back pressure. Okay. Now, as you can see here, even though setting it at a low pressure, it's, it's a lot more unstable, the pressure um, that gets imposed here. And, and the other issue here is that because we've humidified the air, the humid air is going to over time, lined up this filter. So, so an effective means of controlling back pressure, but, but really not so stable. Um, and if, if, I, if I unplug it and, and, and plug back into here, you can see it's a much more stable um, uh, pressure. Now, as I said, to, to adjust the pressure, mm -hmm. you can it's as easy as uh, just adjusting the water level in the bucket. So I'll just do it like this. And you can see the, the, the pressure is changing. Obviously, to drop the pressure, you just let some water out. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. So let's, uh, let's uh, switch off the air, and the next thing we're going to look at is how the flow control is achieved. So what, what we have, is you still, we still going? What we have here is um, plumbing fittings, and you can see it's just finger tight to remove these fittings. And just roll them off, you separate the pipe, very standard, and there we go. Now, this is what sets the flow. And as you can see, if you look in there, you can see a plate with an orifice hole. This orifice hole is 0.4 millimeters in size, and this sets the flow rate at, at 10 liters per minute. If you want to change the flow rate, well, you just take a different one of these, and you literally Take it and pop it in there. Put the R put the R into the fitting first. Pop that in. It's finger tight. it tight and then you switch
switch on the air, and away you go. So, so literally, no hassle, no fuss, 20 rand or so per unit, and you can set whatever flow rate you want to set. Hi everyone, welcome back. So this is now Mark 4 of the Lockdown CPAP Breathing Aid. Um, and so let me run through what uh, the progression we've made since the last time. Uh, what we've added in here is a separate air and oxygen uh, uh, supply. Obviously we don't have oxygen now, but uh, be that as it may, with humidification. So let me just recap what we have here. So here is our air supply which we'll supply at 4 bar um, and now that air supply simulated in reality will need both air and oxygen. So then we've got to our manifold uh, where we've got our valves and we've got our flow setting orifice plates in each of these couplings and from there the air will then flow to these two containers. So in reality this one will be the oxygen one and this one will be the air one. Each is a humidifier and, and the bubbles are visible in both so that you can see uh, that the flow is happening. This one I've, I've got a nice big um, fish tank air distributor stone. This one it's a much smaller one. And here we've got a, a thermometer on and we're seeing the temperature is sitting at 32 degrees. And then from here the, the, the air and the oxygen is then combined and it goes into the patient circuit. We have the patient, the aerosol box, the manometer, and the, the bubbling back pressure control. And then obviously also we've got the, our extractor ducting. So what we have here to establish humidity, we, we have a fish tank heater in this bucket over there, controlling the temperature, and there's also a fish tank pump running. So what that is doing is that circulating hot water in, or warm water in these bottles. You can set the temperature of the bottles to whatever you would like uh, to, to give a comfortable humidity and, and breathing temperature to the patient. Okay, so let's, let's fire up and, and let's get going. So the first thing I'm going to do is, is turn on the air supply. Okay. Okay, that was actually on, but let's, uh, let's turn on the, the oxygen first, so we can see the oxygen bubbling nicely there. There's still no one in the other one, so we'll turn on the air. And now we've got air, you can see here our distributor is not great. We think we'll, uh, we'll need to get a, probably a fish tank stone in there too. And so now the ventilator is in operation. So let's have a look again. Nice stable pressure. We have a nice comfortable patient. Patient, is it comfortable? Okay, so nice warm, humid air. Let's go back and just have a look. Okay, nice warm, uh, bubbling, uh, humidified air. Okay, thanks everyone.